Do you like the sound of your own voice? Repeat after me. My voice matters. My voice matters. Hell yes, it does. <laughs> I've noticed a curious thing. When you give a woman a microphone, she's afraid of being the most powerful voice in the room. This fear stems from girls being conditioned to silence their voices. And when you silence your voice, you silence your power. By the time girls become women, it's ingrained into who we are. As a music teacher, I've noticed that when teens perform together, boys will confidently mess up and get louder, <laughs> while girls will quietly mess up and often become completely silent. We live in a world that teaches girls to be perfect, not powerful. I've learned that when you create space for girls of eight or women of 48 to confidently turn up the volume on their instruments, they'll find power in all aspects of their lives. I was always a music-loving kid, yet by the time I reached kindergarten, I was already too afraid to sing in front of people. That shy kid, feeling powerless due to her own insecurities, became a quiet teen with a secret that made her feel even more powerless. When I was 14 years old, I was sexually assaulted, but I wouldn't admit it. I didn't understand that you could get raped by your boyfriend, and the words coercion and consent were not familiar to me. I'd been sneaking around, and I thought it was my fault. It was the hardest year of my life. Honestly, I wanted to die. But music gave me my power back. Listening to music with a lot of pain in it made me not feel so alone, so I scoured the World Wide Web learning everything I possibly could about my favorite bands and musicians. In the late 90s, downloadable music had just become a thing, and we were all in awe that you could be the proud owners of a pirated song after only a two to three day wait time. <laughs> that sketchy tactic coupled with Columbia House's bogus 12 CDs for one cent yield. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. This led me to a pretty sweet new music collection. And before social media existed, there was this other spot where we would go to on the internet to lie about our lives to strangers. It was called a chat room. And I found this online community. It ended up being this mass education for me in music and culture, while connecting me with people who understood struggle and sadness. That online connection through music gave me the power that I needed to move through my depression. And learning the bass guitar parts to my favorite songs brought me even closer to that music that had become so incredibly important to me. There were many sleepless nights spent sitting on my bed with my headphones on and my bass in my hands. When I was focused on learning music, there wasn't room in my head for any other kind of thought. That beginning bass work laid the foundation for what would become a career in music. But I hadn't turned up the volume yet. That required a real life connection. In my early 20s, I was living alone and completely out of touch with myself and my bass. I felt like I'd hit rock bottom, and this created space for me to do something kind of insane. I moved to an island where I didn't know anyone. <laughs> and shortly after arriving, music found me again. I 
I was at this party one night, and there was a bass guitar leaning against the wall. I walked over to it and picked it up, and immediately, all these fragments of songs that I had learned in my teenage bedroom just came flooding out of me. Then this guy walks up to me, and he says, Yo, turn it up, B! <laughs> that man, Mike Allen, ended up becoming my teacher and mentor. He created a safe and powerful space for me to reconnect with music. And within a few months, I was in a band, and I was completely transformed. Powerful. Happy. When I wasn't sleeping, I was in a bar playing bass. Now, this is a lifestyle for the young. So <laughs> after a while, it was time for something new. My volume was up, and I was ready to create space for other women to turn up their volume as well. The first thing I wanted to do, encourage the youth. I found my calling as a music director for a nonprofit organization called Girls Rock Charlotte. I'm in my element now, teaching girls and gender diverse youth to use their voice to stand up for themselves and others with the power of music. Campers ages 8 to 16 learn an instrument, form a band, write their own original song, and then at the end of the week, they have a rockin' concert. <laughs> You see kids completely transform after just five days of camp. And the confidence that I gained performing on stage allows me to stand in front of a class and teach. It also becomes this contagious energy that I pass on to each one of my students, believing in them the same way that Mike believed in me. I've met so many kids with powerful voices. And one of those voices belongs to a girl named Lisa Bettendorf. Lisa's a sweet and silly kid who spent most of her life performing while also dealing with some pretty heavy stuff. She was born with a rare heart defect called ALCAPA, and this has caused her to spend her life in and out of hospitals and doctor's offices. Three days after her most recent open heart surgery, Lisa used the power of music to transform her pain into triumph. With each song, her voice got stronger and more powerful, and she amazed her doctors with her levels of improvement. When you hear Lisa sing, you don't see a fragile hospital patient. You see a soulful powerhouse. Music gives an incredible girl a beautiful voice that she uses to diminish her fears and then heal herself. And this also helps her captivate and inspire people in a very unlikely space. Now at these summer camps where I was meeting cool kids like Lisa, I noticed something fascinating. The adult volunteers were just as transformed and inspired as the campers. The power of music gets them as well. This led me to discover my next mission. Make sure every woman knows that she has an inner rock star, even if she hasn't met her yet. In the past five years, I've created over 30 all-women bands. And one of those band members is Beth. Immediately, I noticed this quiet strength about her, but I could tell she was dealing with a lot of anxiety. After four weeks of practice with her band, they went and performed at an open mic night, and they did awesome! <laughs> Shortly after, she told me how transformative that experience had been for her. When Beth was a child, she was sexually assaulted for years by her piano teacher. After enduring that kind of pain and trauma, 
She couldn't play music anymore, even though she loved it so much. Beth pushed herself to join Lady Rockstars nearly 30 years later so she could regain that piece of herself that she lost. The combination of music and sisterhood made her feel more whole than nearly two decades of therapy. And I'm proud to report that since that initial performance, she has been in multiple bands and she takes her power back with every single strum. Now this is the first time that you're hearing my story, but someone else has been listening to me repeat most of these words over and over as I've been preparing to give this talk. <laughs> A few days ago, My five-year-old daughter, Cadence, came up to me and said, Mommy, I'm going to use my girl power. <laughs> and then she, then she came came up to me with her guitar and she started strumming it saying, look how powerful I am. This is the truth that brought me to speak to you here today. You'll find power in music. From the five-year-old me who lost her voice to the teenage me who lost her innocence to the struggles that I've had as a woman musician and now, as a mother trying to create a better world for her child, this has been the story of how I found my voice. And now I'm using it to tell you that your voice matters. Music will unlock something in every single one of you. And for those of you sitting there thinking, well, not me. I'm just not a musical person. Someone told you that. <laughs> someone, someone said, you can't sing. You don't have any rhythm. Pitch, please. <laughs> you can find the right timing. You can find the right pitch. You too can find confidence with the power of music. Here's some things that you can do to tap into your inner rock star. Pick up an instrument and go find your people. I swear to you, learning an instrument is not as hard as you probably think it is. Go online and learn the bare minimum. I'm talking about how to hold the thing. <laughs> and then immediately go meet people. Go to a drum circle or a ukulele meetup. Someone there will show you something new and help connect you to the power of music. And even if you don't want to play an instrument on the long term, I'm just suggesting that you learn one simple song. Just having conquered that one thing will give you motivation to, to continue to step outside of your comfort zone and grow. Of course, you don't have to have an instrument to feel the power of music. You can't just grab a group of friends and go to a concert. Being locked in a musical moment with a room full of people will give you community and connection and in turn will amplify your power. Please 
Encourage yourself and everyone else to sing and use your voice. Be that fun person who randomly bursts into song at appropriate moments. <laughs> or at inappropriate ones. Be that weirdo who's in their car rocking out at a red light. <laughs> Go and ask people, what's on your playlist right now? What kind of bands do you like? Make genuine human connections. Music is powerful. Your voice is powerful. Start telling yourself that your voice is worth listening to. Now I'm going to ask you to repeat after me again, but this time I want you to really mean it. Repeat after me. My voice matters. My voice matters. Hell yes it does. Woo!